from Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Cary Grant and Gene Arthur in Only Angels Have Wings. Lux presents Hollywood. This program is our way of thanking you for your loyalty to Lux Flakes. Every time you purchase a box of Lux Flakes, you're playing an active part in making this program possible. And every time you buy a box of Lux Flakes, you're assuring safe, thrifty care for your nice things, for everything safe in water alone. Because Lux has no harmful alkali to fade colors or spoil fabrics. It keeps your things new looking longer. That's worth remembering, isn't it? Lux is safe and it saves. Tonight, we take you to South America in a play of high adventure and romance in bringing you Cary Grant, Jean Arthur, Thomas Mitchell, Richard Bothamus, and Rita Hayworth in Only Angels Have Wings. The music of the Lux Radio Theater is conducted by Louis Silvers. And between the acts, you'll hear Arthur E. Laporte, captain of the plane Yankee Clipper, just returned from its history-making flight to Europe. And now, here's your host and producer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. During the past week, Columbia Pictures Corporation released to the world a photo play which, in my opinion, will be regarded as one of the finest adventure dramas of all time, destined for a long and successful run. It's called Only Angels Have Wings. For making it possible to bring this drama to the air, our thanks go to Columbia Studios, director Howard Hawks, and the brilliant players who reenact tonight the roles they so recently created. Our special thanks to Gene Arthur and Thomas Mitchell, who interrupted work on their next Columbia picture, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, in order to be here this week. Our play brings back an old favorite and introduces a new one. In Only Angels Have Wings, a great personality of past seasons reappears on the screen for the first time in three years, Richard Bartholomus. And our newcomer is a beautiful and talented young actress, Rita Hayworth, whom we hear in the role of Judy McPherson. Mr. Bartholomus is Bat McPherson, Jean Arthur plays Bonnie Lee, Thomas Mitchell is the flyer called The Kid, and Cary Grant, who stars next for RKO in Memory of Love, takes the part of Jeff Carter. Also from the original cast are Noah Beery Jr., Victor Killian, and Donald Barry. Only Angels Have Wings was not written with any thought of the occasion which this nation observes tomorrow, Memorial Day. And yet, when you've heard our drama... I think you'll agree that it's in the spirit of America's Day of Remembrance, since it tells the story of the sacrifice and daring of those who made it safe for man to fly. We take off now and begin the play. The Lux Radio Theater presents Cary Grant and Jean Arthur in Only Angels Have Wings, with Richard Bartholomus, Thomas Mitchell, and Rita Hayworth. Night has fallen on the little town of Barranca, port of call for South American banana boats. Near the waterfront, the fog hangs low over the muddy, narrow streets, and in the garish light of kerosene lamps, the natives swarm through the marketplace. Jammed in the crowd is a young American girl. She pushes her way quickly through the streets, glancing frequently over her shoulder at two men who've been following her. In desperation, she stops by a peddler's stand, snatches up a butcher's knife, and turns to face her two pursuers. All right, gents. Step right up and be carved into small pieces. Lady, we've decided to appeal to your better nature. What? Uh, it wasn't me wanting to follow you, lady. This guy thought it up all by himself. We just wanted to buy you a drink. <laughs> Say, are you American? No, oh, don't let the clothes fool you, lady. Why, well, I thought you were a cop. Well, why didn't you say so? Gee, Winnickers, am I glad to see you. Hmm. You buy me a drink, I'm going to buy you a drink. Uh, you won't need this knife anymore. Come on, let's go. Say, it, it sure sounds good to hear something that doesn't sound like pig Latin. Where are you from? Oh, he's Les Peters, and I'm Joe Souther, New York and Kansas. Uh, what's your name? Lee. Lee what? Bonnie Lee from Brooklyn. Hiya, Bonnie. I didn't hear Bonnie. <laughs> hey, Dutchie. Hello, oh, hello, Joe. Hello, Les. You bring the mail from the boat? Sure. Something with it. Dutchie, meet Miss Lee. How do you do? How are you? How about a drink, Dutchie? Oh, sure, sure. Uh, sit down. Make yourself at home. Cigarette, Bonnie? Thanks. Oh, it sure feels good to be off that boat. What are you fellas doing down here? 
Oh, just the same as everybody else. Working for the Dutchman. What's that? Oh, we fly a little mail and things here and there. Flyers, huh? Well, who'd ever think there was a flying field in a place like this? Where is it? Mm, just outside door. Outside the door? Yeah. Operation office behind the door. Hanger in the cow shed out that way. Very high class. Oh, sure. Well, here you are, Miss Lee. Thanks, Dutchie. Well, score, hmm? To us. Down the hatch. Happy landing. <laughs> what are you doing down here, Miss Lee? On your way back to the States? Yeah, if I don't get a job in Panama. Oh, professional? Yeah, I quit a show in Valparaiso. What time does your boat leave again? 4 a.m., so they tell me. 4 a.m.? Hey, Dutchie, bring a bottle. No, no, no. You boys better go easy. What for? Well, one of you has to fly the mail tonight. Oh, can you beat that? All right, Dutchie, take a number. A number? What for? Anything up to ten. One to ten? Oh, no, 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 no. Not me. You want to gamble on who is going up in bad weather, you better pick somebody else for a number, yeah? All right. Funny. Any number. Go ahead, anything up to ten. No, sirree, not me. I feel the same way he does. No, nobody is worrying about who's going up. What we're worrying about is who who's is going... going to take you to dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Now, who said anything about staying for dinner? Oh, well, we'll send you a formal invitation. I got matchsticks in my hand, Les. Odd or even? Odd. <laughs> even. Too bad, Les. Well, Bonnie, how do you like your steaks? Oh, I don't know. Joe Souther. Joe Souther, you're up next. That's you, Les. Joe? Hey, Joe. Hiya, Jeff. Over here. Stand by, Joe. Take us a clearing up over the pass. Oh, no, not me, Papa. Les lost. I'm having dinner with Miss Lee. Miss Lee, Mr. Carter. How do you do? How do you do? Sorry, Joe, the mail goes on schedule. So do the pilots. Since when? Now, look, Jeff, they gambled and he lost. Now, let him go. Is that an order, Dutchie? Yeah, um, no. Well, who is running things here, anyway? Mm. Well, that's what I mean. Come on, get going, Joe. Oh, what about Miss Lee? Don't worry about Miss Lee. I'll be glad to take up where you left off. Now, look here, mister. I've got something to say about this, you know. Uh, chorus girl? No, I do a specialty. So much the better. See you later, Miss Lee. Oh, you will, will you? Now, wait a minute. Say, who does that guy think he is? That's the boss. As you might have gathered from the conversation. Well, he's not my boss. Well, Bonnie, I hope you win. <laughs> I'll be seeing you. Goodbye, Joe. Now, 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 Joe, be careful. No chances, huh? Want to watch him take off, Bonnie? All right. This way. <clears throat> Say, how can he fly in this fog? Oh, it's just on the ground. He'll pull right up through this. What he's waiting for is that heavy stuff piled up in the pass. Sounds like double talk to me. <laughs> well, the only way of getting inland from here is through a deep pass. It's about 14,000 feet in the low spot. Winds and cloud make it a bad place, so we keep a lookout partway through to tell us when it clears. Calling for anchor. Go oh, ahead, Tex. here he comes in now. Stand by. She's moving fast. How's it look down there? All right if the wind doesn't shift. Okay, she's open. Let him fly. Okay, Tex. Go ahead, Joe. Okay, boss. Come on, come on. Get her up, Joe. Oh, he's up. So what? It's the most wonderful thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I know. Reminded you of a great big beautiful bird, didn't it? No, didn't. It wasn't like a bird at all. That's why it was so wonderful. It was like a flying human being. Yeah, well, you're right about one thing. A bird would have too much sense to fly in that kind of muck. All right, Mike, turn off those lights. <laughs> Hey, Jeff. Hello, kid. Hey, the wind swung round. It's moving that fog bank in thick as mud. Yeah. Calling lookout. Go ahead, Jeff. How's it look up in the pass? I was just going to call you. Jeff, you better hold Joe down there for a while. I can't. He's already gone. You ought to be able to see him by now. See him? I can't see the tip of my nose. All right. Stand by to put out a flare in case I don't get hold of him. Never mind the flare, Pop. Little Jody heard every word. Well, I do. Come back. Jeff. Jeff, is that you? What's the matter? Shut up. Yeah, Joe. Come on back. But look, it's pretty thick down here. Start letting down. When you get over the fog, I'll line you up and talk you in. Say, Jeff. What? <laughs> you tell that beautiful blonde I'm still in the running. Will you stick to business, Joe? All I want to do is order a couple of steaks for dinner. How about it, Dutch? Hey, we're going to tell him it's all right. It's all right with me, too. Mm. All right, Joe, you're all set. Okay, here I come. Hey, Shorty, plug in that field set. Come on, get going. Yes, sir. Mike, get the big light ready. All right, sir. Turn it straight up. It's kind of cold out here, Jeff. Here's your coat. Mike, like those tubs. Okay. Joe Souther. Joe Souther. Okay, Jeff. Coming down. On top of the fog at, at 1,500. That's higher than I thought. Mm -hmm. Watch carefully, Joe. We're turning on the lights. 
Turn them on, Mike. Here they go. They are joking. You see them? No, not a thing. Can't even see the glow, Papa. Mm, must be thicker than it looks. Well, it won't hurt to take a stab at it. Yeah. Hey, Joe, blimp your motor. All right, Joe, all right. You're passing over the field. Now turn 180 degrees and start letting her down and watch for the lights. You know, it sounds a little that way. Yeah. Joe, you're a little south. A little south. Okay, Papa. Turning north. You come. 800. 600. Cut it up into hundreds, Joe. 500. 400. Take it easy, Sonny. Take it easy. Shut up. 300. Look, gunner, Joe. Down to 100 now, Jeff. There he is, Jeff. He's way off. Joe, pull him up. Pull him. We're headed for the... That wasn't right, was it? No, lady, not quite. Uh, look, Joe. Joe, you had the wrong line. You're way off. Okay, okay, Jeff. I saw the lights. I'll get it next time. Nothing doing, Joe. Don't take any more chances. Now, you've got three hours gas. Three hours? So... Oh, Jeff, she'll almost be on the boat by then. Listen, I told you to stick to business. Now, get up on top and cruise around until it opens up down here. That's right, Jeff. Don't let him do Shut it. Up. Oh, Jeff, you give me one more chance. Yeah, I think I see a hole. Yeah, I do see one. Now, Joe. I'm coming down, Jeff. Now, listen, Joe. You've got your orders. Stay up there and quit worrying about that blonde. It's all right, Jeff. I see the lights. I'll make it easy. Now, listen, I'll Joe. make it... Joe! Joe! Pull up! Pull up! You're headed for the creek! Joe! All right, Mike. Get the wagon. Take along a big pair of shears in case you have to cut him out. Les, you got the mail. Well, did the best you could, Jeff. Yeah. Mr. Wise Guy up there. <laughs> Wouldn't listen to me. Do something. Do something. He may be alive. Don't just stand there. Oh, cut it out. Haven't you caused enough trouble? He's dead. Calling Baranka. Calling Baranka. Go Calling ahead, Calling Baranka. Go ahead. Jeff, did you get Joe down all right? Yeah. All except for one tree that stuck up too high. Oh, sorry. Hey, where's that drink, Banjo? You're right away, senor. How's it look outside, kid? It's clearing up a little. Okay. Mr. Carter. Yeah? Mr. Carter, do you think... I mean, do you think it was my fault what happened out there? Sure, it was your fault. The Dutchman hired him, I sent him up on schedule, the fog came and a tree got in the way. All your fault. Forget it unless you want the honors. Hiya, Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Just got back. Here, I missed all the excitement around here. Yeah, afraid you did. You won't see a better one in a long time. Yeah, I see. She's a good one, all right. Here, gangway, please. Here's your steak, senorita. Here is the other one. Who wants it, eh? Only down here. Oh, see, si, senor. Hey, that looks all right, Pancho. How can you do that? Do what? Eat that steak. Why, what's the matter with it? It was his. <laughs> Look, what do you want me to do? Have it stuffed? Haven't you any feelings? Don't you realize he's dead? Who's dead? Yeah, who's dead? Joe. Joe? Who's Joe? Anybody know a Joe? What's the matter with you fellas? He was sitting here with us talking and laughing just a few minutes oh, ago, and now he's... Oh, break the news to mother and tell her there's no other... You... Well, how do you like that? Wait a minute, you little fool. Why don't you use your head? I don't know how you can act like this. Why, that poor kid, he was... Yeah, I know. He's dead. <laughs> Yes, he's dead. That's right, and he's been dead for about 20 minutes, and all the weeping and waning in the world won't make him any deader 20 years from now. If you feel like bawling, how do you think we feel? Sorry. Now, come on, go on outside and walk around and stay there until you put all that together. Hello, miss. Was that you they were rising in there? Well, don't feel too bad about it. I did the same thing myself when I first came down here. Hey, Mister, can you kick real hard? Well, maybe you won't need it. I think I'd feel better. Does this sort of thing happen very often? Oh, that depends on weather and luck. We've drawn spades twice in the last three months. Uh, that is not counting this one. I suppose they'll be at it again tomorrow. Tonight, if it clears. <laughs> they must love it. Flying, I mean. What is there about it that gets him? Well, I'm not a flyer myself. I'm a radio operator. Hey, hey, you better ask the kid. 
Miss Lee, Mr. Dan. How do you do? I do. She wants to know why you like flying, kid. I've been in it 22 years, Miss Lee, and I couldn't give you an answer to make any sense. <laughs> What's so funny about that? That's what my dad used to say. Flair? No, trapeze. High stuff. He wouldn't choose a net. Yeah, there's not much future in that either. Yeah, we found that out. Tell me about this head man, this uh, Jeff. Does he go up too? Only when he thinks it's too tough for anybody else. Well, just goes to show you how wrong you can be. The kid could tell you he's Jeff's best friend. The only thing I can tell you, he's a good guy for gals to stay away from. Thanks. I'll remember that. Excuse me, will you? <laughs> Mr. Carter? Hello, what do you want? I, uh, I put it all together. Yeah, you grown up yet? I hope so. All right, who's Joe? I never heard of him. Does anyone know the peanut vendor? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Sure, sure. hit it. Well, let me at the piano. All right, all together. Goodbye, Dutchie. Well, goodbye, Mr. Carter. It's too bad Baronk is so far from Brooklyn. What's your hurry? It's only a few minutes after 12. Your boat doesn't leave until 4 o'clock. When are you going to get some sleep? Oh, after your boat sails. <laughs> Aren't you just wasting your time? Well, now, there's a point that's open to argument. Ah, that's what I'm afraid of. What? Those arguments. What's the matter with them? Oh, they're too one-sided. Well, no hard feelings. You're not even annoyed, are you? No, why should I be? <laughs> Say, what was she like, anyway? Who? That girl that made you act the way you do. A mm, whole lot like you. Just as nice, almost as smart. Chorus girl? <laughs> Only by temperament. <laughs> well, at least you're true to the type. Mm -hmm. Still carrying the torch for her, aren't you? Got a match? Say, don't you ever have any... Nope, don't believe in laying in the supply of anything. Matches, marbles, money, or women. Hmm? That's right. No looking ahead, no tomorrows, just today. That's right. Is that why she gave you the air? Who? A girl. Say, listen, I wouldn't ask any woman to... Hey, you can think up more questions. What wouldn't you? Ask... What? Ask anybody to do. Look, did you ever know a woman who didn't want to make plans, map out everything, get it all set? Oh, well, I don't blame them, I guess. It's the only way they can operate, run a home and have kids. I suppose you think that's a lot easier and less dangerous than flying. <laughs> I don't know. I never tried it. Well, didn't you ask her to? Who? That girl. I told you. I wouldn't ask any woman to. Well, what if she were willing to? Yeah, I know. That's what they all say. Women think they can take it, but they can't. The minute you get up in the air, they start calling the airport. And when you get down, you find them waiting for you so scared they hate your insides. What if she was the type that didn't scare so easily? Yeah, there's no such animal, lady. Now, how do you know? Well, the girl I was telling you about came as close to it as anybody I ever met. But one night when I'd been lost in a fog, something like this, radio beam was out, I was glad to get my feet on the ground. What do you think my welcome home speech was? She was hoping I'd crashed. What? Yeah, she couldn't stand the gas. Said she'd rather see me dead, have it over with. Told me if I wouldn't quit flying, it was all off. You wouldn't, would you? Mm -mm, I'm still flying. I wonder what happened to her. Well, I don't know for sure. I, uh, I heard she married another flyer. <laughs> now, now, lady, is there anything else you'd like to know about me? Would you, uh, would you like to go over to my room? Got some letters from home. Pictures of my father and mother. Pictures of me the first time I went up in the air. Pictures of my first crash. Any pictures of you when you were a baby? I don't remember. Want to go and look? Sure. Wait. Bonnie? Okay, keep on the way we're going. Just follow your nose, it'll take you right to the boat. Oh. I've got to stick around here. So that's where we were going. Uh-huh. Take care of yourself. But... Look up here. Goodbye, Bonnie. Goodbye. Oh, Jeff. What? What? Tex just called from Lookout. He says the pass is clearing. Did you wake Les up? No, because... Well, Tex says it's nobody's picnic. Hmm. Uh... All right, wind up number seven. Put some coffee in it. I already did. So long, Bonnie. Have a nice trip. Hey, wait a minute. You going up yourself? Sure. When you'll be back? Oh, well, it takes three hours each way. Won't be back until after your boat sails. Hey, I, uh, I like that saying goodbye. Let's try it again, huh? So long, Bonnie. So long. Say, 
Things happen awful fast around here. Uh-huh. Is it going to be dangerous? What do you want me to do, put a net under him? Well, lady, you're really better off this way. Yeah, I guess. Now, look, I hardly know the man. Sure, but you'll get over it. You have just heard Act One of Only Angels Have Wings, starring Cary Grant and Gene Arthur. During this short intermission, we bring you the Browning family. As the scene opens, we find Dot and Midge just coming home from a shopping trip. They bought a graduation present for someone. Let's see what it is. Mother! Oh, Mother, look what we got, Mary Lou. See, it's some lingerie. Isn't it adorable? Why, it's as sweet as it can be. And I know Mary Lou will love it. Oh, I hope she takes care of it. She's so careless with her things. Ah, the good old Browning trick. We'll send a jingle, like this. Uh, these lovely things will wear and wear and keep on looking new if you'll just give them proper care. And that means luck for you. <laughs> oh, Midge, you're a genius, isn't she, Mother? She certainly is. And another stroke of genius would be to send a box of Lux Flakes along with your gift. You can depend on the famous Lux promise, it's safe for everything safe in water alone. Lux Flakes float out every trace of perspiration and soil and leave your nice things dainty and new-looking. And they'll stay new-looking a long time with regular Lux care. So buy the thrifty big box of Lux Flakes tomorrow, won't you? And Lux under things after every wearing. Your blouses, dresses, sweaters, and pretty accessories, often. Here's Mr. DeMille. Act two of Only Angels Have Wings, starring Cary Grant as Jeff and Jean Arthur as Bonnie Lee, with Thomas Mitchell as the kid, Richard Bothelmus as McPherson, and Rita Hayworth as Judy. It's early the following morning. In the cafe adjoining the landing field, Bonnie's having breakfast. Jeff Carter, returning from his flight, comes through the door. As he sees Bonnie, he stops dead, his eyes glinting coldly. What are you doing here? Having my breakfast. Is your boat still here? No. Has it sailed? Uh huh. Well, how'd you happen to get left behind? Well, I, uh, I just uh, told the man. Told him what? Uh, to put my trunk on the dock. Yeah, why? <laughs> well, I couldn't stay over without having anything to wear now, could I? What's so funny? Doesn't it seem funny to you? What? Getting off that boat, well, doesn't it? I don't know. You know, the girl that got off that boat is a perfect stranger to me. I don't know. I don't know whether this is me or another fellow. You know, by all rights, Bonnie Lee ought to be sound asleep on that boat far out to sea. Yeah, well, she's not so far out to sea as you think. What isn't? The boat. Hey, kid. Yeah? Put some more gas in number seven. Call up Santa Maria. Have them hold the boat till we get there. Well, what are you waiting for? Boat doesn't stop at Santa Maria this trip. Why not? They have no bananas. <laughs> they have no bananas? Yes, they have no bananas. You shut up. Don't worry, mister. Look, you don't have to bother about me. I'm cured. I suppose there's a first time for everything. What do you mean? Well, I've never made quite such a chump out of myself. Look, I didn't ask you to stay. I wouldn't ask I anyone... I know. You wouldn't ask any woman to do anything. That's right. And what's more, there's something else I wouldn't do. What? Get burned twice in the same place. There's another boat leaving next week. I'll be on it. Good. Jeff, he's here. Who? That new flyer you sent for. His name's McPherson. Yeah, where is he? Outside with the boys. You want him in here? No, I'll go out. All right. Where you been flying, McPherson? Mexico City. What kind of stuff they're using down there, McPherson? Oh, a lot of crates. Hello, mister. Oh, hello. Are you Carter? Yeah. But you're not McPherson. Your name's Kilgallen. Kilgallen? Hey, what is this, Jeff? You heard him. That Kilgallen? That's right. Well, what of it? He's not the first guy that came down here under a different name. No, but he's the first pilot who ever bailed out of his plane and let his mechanic crash. Why, the dirty... Cut it out, Jan. Did you know the kid was working down here, Kilgallen? What? He is. <laughs> I don't think there's anything funny about that. You're right, there isn't. But I had to come a long way to find it out. Yeah, but, but what's the kid got to do with oh, it? Oh, nothing, Dutchie. Only it was the kid's younger brother that was killed when this guy took to his parachute. Oh, Oh, Jeff. Jeff, there's the kid now. He's, he's, uh, uh, huh? hmm. 
Now, listen, brother. You better make yourself scarce. Because for your information, the kid carries a gun. Aren't you getting kind of careful of me all of a sudden? I'm not thinking about you, but it's going to be inconvenient for me if they slap the kid in the hoosgow. I have to meet him sooner or later, don't I? Yeah, well, maybe you're right. At your own funeral. Gee, it's hot down here on the ground. Who's got a match? Hey, what's the matter? Like walking in a graveyard. Oh, hello. Are you the new guy? Welcome to our city. My name's... Hello, kid. Kilgallen. Long time no see. That's right. Yeah. Thought there was something. Take it back, kid. Here. Huh? I'm all right. Kilgallen. Two years ago, I'd have broke your... Keep out of my sight. I may still do it. Well, that's none of my business, Jeff. But I don't know why you stopped him. You're all right. It's none of your business. Oh, Beth. Oh, Judy. Come here. I want you to meet these people. Gentlemen, this is Mrs. McPherson. Mr. Shelton is my name. Mr. Shelton? This is Les Peters. How do you do? Mr. Peters? This is Jeff Carter. Jeff. Oh, how do you do? Mm hmm. Mrs. McPherson. I'm, I'm sorry, Beth, but I forgot to ask you for the trunk keys. Oh, yeah, you, you did. I'm afraid that I interrupted something. Not at all. Now, here you are. Run along. I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. I'm glad to have met everyone. I know what you're thinking. No, she doesn't know about me. Come inside, Kilgallen. Jeff, you're not going to put this man to work. That's none of your business either. Come on. Sit down. You do some queer things, Kilgannon. McPherson is the name. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Why didn't you tell your wife what you've done? Oh, uh, let's get this over with. When does the next boat leave? Have you got enough dough for your passengers? No. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, I wonder if I could. What? Cram you down their throats. That bunch out there? I wouldn't mind choking a few of them. Hello, Carter speaking. Yeah, this is Grant Hart. Hello, Mr. Hardwood. I'm speaking from the mine, Jeff. My boy's hurt bad. What's the matter? We don't know, but I've got to get him out of here. At least bring a doctor in. You mean fly a doctor up to the mine? Yes. We can't set a plane down there. There's no room. It's practically suicide. Jeff, you've got to. You can write your own ticket. I'll take full responsibility for the you plane. You will? You will? All right, wait a minute. Hey, Kilgallen, you want a chance? What do you think? I'm not promising you a job, but at least you'll make your passage home. That's all right with me. Okay. Mr. Hardwood, you got a deal. Uh, a plane will be up there in a couple of hours, I hope. All right, Kilgallen. You take a doctor into a boy who's hurt. It's a bad place to get into, but worse to get out. Have you got a map? Here. And when you land, you better come in short or you'll run out of ground because there's a big drop all around there. Well, are you ready? Sure. And um, thanks. Thanks? For what? <laughs> Oh, come in, kid. Hey, Mike tells me that Kilgallen took off an hour ago. You're not putting him to work, are you? We'll talk about that later. Sit down. Take a look at that chart over there, kid. Huh? You're not giving me an eye test, are you? Uh-huh. Read that fourth line. You worried about my eyes? <laughs> Just because I didn't recognize Kilgallen right off? Now, quit stalling, kid. Read it. Sure. L-P-E-D. Hmm. That's very good. Yeah, I could have told you. Wait a minute. Stay there. Whoa. I got a new chart. Now, come on. Fourth line on this card. P D E O. Try the fifth. F Z B D E. Why, that's better than I can do. Well, that's that. Now, what about this Kilgallen guy? He's not staying here, is he? Why not? Why not? Thought you'd be the last guy to ask me that. He's no good, and you know it. Why, he's. Take it easy, take it he's easy. He's no good. Look, you think he's any worse than a guy who double crossed his best friend? Huh? Now, look, kid, I don't care about myself. Anything you do is all right with me. But if the Dutchman loses another plane, he's cooked. Cooked? Yeah. I thought he was rolling dough. Yeah, well, why do you think that new plane is still down there on the dock? Yeah, you know, I wondered about that. Well, it's because he hasn't got enough dough to pay the freight. Now, look, kid, here it is. Dutchie made an agreement. If he could get the mail out of here twice a week on schedule for six months, he'd not only get a long contract, but a government subsidy, too. Do you know what that would mean? Plenty of money around here. No more secondhand junk to fly. No more pass to monkey with. Why these new jobs can get over the top of those peaks in any kind of weather. Gee, that'll be fine. When did the schedule start? Six months ago. Well, then you're... Yeah, only one more week. Or at least until the northbound boat arrives. 
That's why you've been forcing things, huh? Uh-huh. What'd you tell a fella? <laughs> Dutchy. Dutchy? Why? Well, uh... He was afraid that if you guys knew the spot he was in, you'd start taking unnecessary chances. <laughs> what a guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, you're right about my eyes. I couldn't see those cards. Mm-hmm. I learned them by heart. What about the new one? <laughs> Thought she told me where you hid it. <laughs> oh, the old <laughs> fool, double-crossing himself. No, no, he wasn't he thinking about like that. that. He was thinking how you'd feel grounding me. Yeah. Well, you're through flying, kid. Uh-huh. After 20 years. Well, I guess that's long enough for anybody. You're going to need that kill gallon, aren't you? I might. I'm thinking of keeping him on. Well, if you do, you can forget how I feel about him. Thanks. Look, kid, there's a lot of things you can do around here to help me. You know, oh, but... sure, sure. I know. I can help Mike. I can... I can... Uh... Sure. See you later, Pop. Calling Baranka. McPherson, calling Baranka. Go ahead. We got out all right. All in one piece. I'm on my way home. What do you want me to do? Pat you on the back? Signing off. Morning, kid. Oh, hello, Bunny. How you doing? Oh, not so bad. After spending a night in that mouse auditorium I'm sleeping in. <laughs> Just about room enough for me in a flip gun. I thought we had you fixed up in a pretty good room. You did. Mr. Carter had other ideas. He gave my place to McPherson and his wife. Oh. Well, you warned me. Say, isn't that the girl, the one he used to be in love with? Bonnie, when it rains, every third drop falls on one of them. <laughs> I can believe that, all right. They come right out of the woodwork. <laughs> well, more power to him. Oh, sure. Say... You don't think I care anything about him. Uh-huh. Well, I don't, see? Just like to tell him what I think of him, that's all. All you have to do is raise your voice a little. Is that him flying up there? The old master himself. What's he doing? Testing an old smashed up plane that Mike stuck together with a little glue. Or did you use bailing wire this time, Mike? Don't worry. Those wings will stay on all right. Well, we'll soon see. He's high enough. Here he comes. Hey, what's the devil? Hey, hey, he's skinning. He's not trying to do that. I can't see. What's happened, Mike? Windshield gave way. Must have hit something. Looks like he's out of control. Pull her out, Jeff. Pull her out. Now's a chance, Jeff. Come on, come on, get out. Jump, you fool. Jump. Jump? What's he doing? He's going to try to land. He can't make it. Mike. Mike, get set for a crash. Like that crash. Why doesn't he jump? Why, why should he jump? He's made of rubber. He is. He wants to hit the ground and see how high he can bounce. Shut up. Here he comes. He'll make it more to kid. I don't know, but it comes as close to it as anyone. There he goes. Look at that guy. Kid, is he all right? Okay, hold that truck. Okay. I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. Yeah, he's okay, Bonnie. Oh. Oh, kid. What's the matter? I don't know. I feel kind of sick. Oh, 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 all right, all right. Take it easy. Take it, take, take, take it easy. Can I come in? Sure. Here. This is good for your stomach, but it won't help much for what ails you. You didn't tell him what a baby I was. No, I skipped that. You won't tell him, will you? After that sample, you still got your chin out for more? Oh, I know. I'm a fool, but... There isn't anything I can do about it. You love him, don't you, kid? Yeah, I guess I do. Why can't I love him the way you do? Why couldn't I sneer when he tries to kill himself? Feel proud when he doesn't? Why couldn't I be there to meet him when he gets back? Why couldn't I... What do you do when he doesn't come back when you expect him to? <laughs> I go nuts. Gee whiz, you're a great help. McPherson calling Baranka. Go ahead, McPherson. Pass. How's your weather, good or bad? Looks like there's a chance to get through. I didn't ask you that. Is it good or bad? Well, it's 
bad, but I can make it. All right, you're the one who's in it. Use your own judgment. Hello, Judy. Jeff, I'd like to talk to you. Why? What's on your mind? Jeff, I just heard that Bat was carrying nitroglycerin. Oh, don't worry, Judy. He's pretty good, you know. Yes, I know. But it's dangerous. Oh, no, not as long as you're in the air, it isn't. Now, why don't you run along? Let Bat do the worrying. How can you be like that with me? Why does he always get things like this to do? Oh, Judy. Oh, stop please, it. Jeff. I told you I was happy. But I lied to you. Why don't people want to work with him? What's he done that makes people act the way they do? Why ask me? Well, you're the only one I can ask. Oh, it was the same at the last place. Everything was all right, and then he, he met someone he knew. Oh, what makes them act that way? Why, you think he was a leper or something. Oh, please, Jeff, I've got to know. Can't you see that? No. No? But... Did you ever hear of the word trust? I did once. I forgot it. I don't blame him for not telling you. Maybe he wanted to find out what he'd got. You're no good, Judy. You never were. What have I done? Why do you have to know all about him? If it's so bad he can't tell you, how do you think he feels? Why did you think of his side of it? Oh, you're just like all of them. You don't know what it means to stick. You never will. Jeff. Good night, Judy. all this? Hello. What's what? What do you think you're doing in my room? And what's all this cooking? Oh, that's coffee. Don't touch it. It's, it's hot. You... Oh! oh, I told you so. Let me see. Oh, cut it out. Go away. Oh, that is a burn. I'll put some butter on it. I don't want any butter on it. It'll make it feel better. I don't want any butter on it. My grandmother always used butter. I don't care what your grandma... Look, what is all this about? Oh, I thought I'd like to have a nice cup of coffee. Oh. It's so cold and rainy outside and so nice and warm and cozy in here. Don't you want one, too? No, I don't. Stop making a lunch stand out of my place. Now, take this thing out of me. No. Ah! I thought you never did that. Did what? Get burned twice in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sit down for a while? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Go ahead. Say, yep. Uh, where do you keep those pictures? What pictures? Those pictures of you when you were a baby? Mm-hmm. We're right back where we started, aren't we, Bonnie? Oh, that was a million years ago. I know you're a lot better now. Yeah. You're a queer duck, Bonnie. So are you. Come here. You're all right, Bonnie. <laughs> Jeff, you don't have to be afraid of me anymore. I'm not trying to tie you down. I don't want a plan. I don't want to look ahead. I don't want you to change anything. I love you, Jeff. Nothing I can do about it. I just love you, that's all. I feel the same way about you the kid does. Anything you do is all right with me. The kid? Yep. He doesn't ask you for anything or get in your way or bother you, does he? He drives me nuts. Hey, Jeff. Jeff, I... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's fine. Come in. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sure, come in. We might as well be in the Grand Central Station. <laughs> I'm awful sorry, Barney. Hey, Jeff, the new ship's okay. We've just been testing the motors. What, you mean she's ready to fly? Sure, but what good is it going to do in this kind of stuff? Well, even if the pass is closed in, she's still got a chance. Chance for what? Taking that mail right over the top. Uh-huh. And you're going to try it, aren't you? Sure, if the boat gets in with the mail. The boat's late. Still might make it. I'll go out and get the feel of the ship. Jeff. Sorry, Bonnie. This has got to be done. Oh, uh, oh, uh, here. Uh, here you are, Bonnie. See if you can find it. It's, uh, it's somewhere there in that box. What? That picture we were talking about. And, uh, and, uh, keep that coffee warm, will you? So long, Bonnie. Kid? Yeah? Uh, do you think that... Uh, do you suppose... Ever pray, Bonnie? Just pray that that boat don't get in until this storm's over. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.
bring down the curtain on the second act of Only Angels Have Wings, starring Cary Grant and Gene Arthur with Richard Bottlemus, Thomas Mitchell, and Rita Hayworth. During our short intermission, we introduce our guest for the evening. But first, may I remind housewives that Lux is the thrifty way to do dishes. Yes, about a penny's worth of Lux Flakes, unless the water is hard, will do your dishes for a whole day and help your hands stay lovely looking, too. In hard water, a little extra Lux softens the water and gives an abundance of suds. Next time you order Lux, remember, a little goes so far, it's thrifty. And buy an extra large size box for your dishes. Here's Mr. DeMille with a prelude to our special guest. For drama and excitement, tonight's play has a real-life parallel in the history-making flight completed Saturday when the Yankee Clipper of Pan American Airways returned to New York after inaugurating regular commercial airmail service across the Atlantic to Europe. The huge Boeing plane capable of carrying 74 passengers stopped at the Azores, Portugal, France, and England, spanning nearly 10,000 miles in seven days. At the controls, commanding a crew of 14, was tonight's guest, Captain Arthur E. Laporte. Veteran of more than half a million miles of ocean flying, he's flown the Pacific 50 times. He made the initial survey flight of the Amazon River and commanded the first airmail flight between Manila and Hong Kong. With congratulations on his superb achievement, the Lux Radio Theater goes to New York to welcome Captain Laporte. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I have just returned, Saturday to be exact, from the first mail trip on a Yankee Clipper, the beginning of commercial flying between the United States and Europe. That means that we have at last conquered the Atlantic. Your play tonight interests me because of the contrast between the methods your flying angels have and the methods we, as flying businessmen of 1939, have. The Yankee Clipper is one of a fleet of six beautiful ships for service on the Atlantic and Pacific. Each one has four giant engines to lift her 41 and a half tons, and each is capable of carrying 74 passengers. Her wings are large enough for a man to pass through, which he does regularly every two hours for inspection. This is a new development. Formerly, it was impossible to get to an engine while the plane was in the air. If an engine needs repair, we can stop it and fix it because we are capable of flying on two engines of our four. So we had no worries about having to disappoint any of the people waiting for our cargo. We carried about 200,000 airmail letters for ardent stamp collectors and a package of diamonds for a firm in Baltimore. And for the ladies... The latest model hats from Scaparelli and Agnes from Paris addressed to Fifth Avenue shops. The Yankee Clipper wasn't flown by one pilot, but by a crew of pilots, engineers, and radio officers who kept constant check on our location, the weather, the functioning of our motors, right down to the temperature of each individual cylinder. The captain of a Clipper isn't expected to be at the controls all the time. He is on duty in his office. Yes, his office right in the plane, from which he supervises the entire crew. I took the Yankee Clipper on the first trip because, out of the Pan American captains qualified to take command, it happened to be my turn. Naturally, such an achievement as the beginning of transatlantic airmail service is due to two things. Careful planning and the tremendous strides the science of aviation has taken recently. On the planning side, you may be surprised to know that although the Yankee Clipper can cross the Atlantic in about 25 hours flying time, it takes about 100 men each working 50 hours to complete the plans and check upon the plane. In other words, it takes about 5,000 hours of planning for 25 hours of flying. Improvements and aids to navigation in the aviation industry have advanced rapidly in the last few years. The planes get better every day, too, and safer. Even now, experiments are being made on a new device which will blow a horn to warn a pilot when there are mountains ahead. Another experimental invention called fog eyes will enable the pilot to measure his exact distance from the ground when it is too thick to see. It may be that only angels have wings, but commercial airlines in the United States give wings to over a million passengers a year. I've grown up with aviation, and I think it is one of the most exciting professions I know. I hope it never stops improving and advancing. Mr. DeMille, I'd like to make the same wish for you and for the Lux Radio Theater. America salutes you, Captain Laporte. We're in Hollywood again, where Cary Grant and Jean Arthur bring us Only Angels Have Wings with Richard Bartholmus, Thomas Mitchell, and Rita Hayworth. The storm still rages over Barranca, but 
the mail boat has arrived on schedule, and Jeff is ready to take off into the thunder-ridden sky. In the operations office, the kid pleads desperately to go with him. Now look here, Jeff. Oh, I heard you the first time. But Jeff... You're not going, kid. Forget it. Why not? Forget it. Tell you what. I'll toss you a coin for yeah. it. Heads, I go. Now watch. Give me that. Give me that. Hey, no, no, no. no, 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 no get away from that. Come on, on, Jeff. Give me that. All right. I, wait, I wait a minute. I got it. <laughs> uh, what are you so anxious for? Well, what do you think of that? Well, it's a nice dollar, kid. It's heads on both sides. <laughs> Is it really? No kidding. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> no wonder I've been buying you drinks all year. <laughs> Jeff. I want to go with you. Please. Uh, all right, okay, if you feel that way about it. <laughs> give me my dollar. Come on, give me, <laughs> give me. It's lucky. <laughs> yeah. Well, you better put another bottle of oxygen in the ship. I already did. See you in the field. Hello. Hello, Barney. Excuse me, will you? Hello, Barney. What's that you've got? Oh, I started that lunch wagon we were talking about. Be careful of the coffee. It was boiling hot when I put it in the box. So don't burn yourself again. <laughs> Thanks, I won't. Have a nice trip, Jeff. Where are you going? Over to the room. What for? Oh, my boat's in. I've got to finish packing. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, say, uh, yeah. isn't that the outfit you came ashore in? Now, how did you remember that? Oh, I don't know. Uh, got a match? Say, don't you think it's about time you started carrying some? Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, Jeff. I, I'm sorry to be so silly. I wanted to do this just the way you... I know. Sure. So long, Bonnie. Jeff. Jeff, I can't let you go. Ah, oh, now look, darling. This has got to stop. No, no, I can't. Stay where you are, Jeff. Wait a minute. What do you mean, swiping that gun from me? Give me back that gun. I won't let you go. You're not going to go, Jeff. You're going to stay right here. I won't let you kid yourself. <laughs> so you're going to do it to keep me from doing it. <laughs> well, well, Bonnie, you're just like all the rest. No, no, I'm not. Jeff, don't go, please. Give me that gun, Bonnie. Oh, Jeff, I... Oh! Jeff! Oh. Well, that's fine. Jeff, oh, my God, Jeff. Uh, go away, Bonnie, go away. Oh, darling, Darling, I didn't mean to. I know you didn't. It was my own fault. I should have known better. Hey, what's going on? He's shot. It's all right. He's in the shoulder. It's okay. Where's the first aid box? Over there in the corner. Well, did you send for the doctor? No, not yet. Oh, well, get him. Get him right away. Who did it? I did. You? How did it happen? I didn't want him to go. Yeah, well, he's not likely to go now. See that? She looks bad. Oh, come on, come on. What is this? A sideshow? Clear out of here. Go on. Oh, no, don't get excited, Grandpa. How's it look to you? Well, it's all right, but you're not going to do much flying with it. <laughs> you're crazy. Am I? Try to move it. Yeah. Uh, see? Now you can join the rest of us cripples. Mm, that's perfect. Can I come in? Sure. Meet the new cripple, McPherson. Yeah, I, I heard about it. Who's flying the mail? I was going to. How are you going to get through that stuff? Over the top with the new trimotor. Will she go that high? I don't know. I can find out. Oh, you don't have to go, McPherson. It's not that kind of job. That's fair enough. I'll see you out in the field in five minutes, kid. I'll be waiting for you. Calling McPherson. For anchor. Calling McPherson. Calling McPherson. Oh, why don't they answer? They ought to be over the mountains by now. Calling McPherson. Calling. Kid. Calling oh, for there anchor. There you are. Go ahead, kid. Hey, Sparks. Tell Jeff we couldn't make it. Got almost 16,000, the bottom fell out. All right, tell him to come on back. Heard you, Jeff. Not coming back. We're going through the pass. Give me that thing. Now, don't be foolish, kid. Tech says it's closed in tight. Turn around and come back. Those are orders, you hear? No dice, Jeff. Signing off. Tell Tex to watch for them. Calling lookout. Go ahead, Sparks. Tex, watch for number four. They're going to try to pass. They just went by here, throttled down, and feeling their way. I tried to talk to them, but they wouldn't answer. Keep trying. Okay. Oh, I'll kill that kid when he gets back. I'll... Baranka. Calling Baranka. Baranka, go ahead. What was that? It sounded like McPherson. McPherson, go ahead. Baranka. Calling Baranka. Go ahead, go ahead. What's the matter? This is McPherson. A bird just smashed in the windshield. It got the kid. What? Say it again. Windshield smashed. It got the kid. 
I'm turning back. Those condors flying in a pass. One of them must have smashed through the windshield. Call him McPherson. Hello, McPherson. They're awful heavy, those birds. You know, if they hit... Jeff, it was McPherson. Tony Baraka. Go ahead, Tex. Jeff, number four's on fire. Left outboard and nose motor. They're headed back to you, and I don't think they can make it. Get going, my truck and that outside, uh, No time, Jeff. Calling number four. Calling number four. Look. There they are. They're coming in. Don't ever get her down, Jeff. Hey, kid. Kid. Number four. Jump. Bail out. Bail out. He's going to try to make it. Bail out. Make first of bail out. Bail out. <laughs> Hey, Doc, that's fine, that's fine. Cut it out, will you? Come on. Jeff, tell this guy to quit fussing with me, will you? I'm all right. Sure. Leave him alone, Doc. Go on. Cigarette pop? Sure, kid. Here you are. How's McPherson? Ooh, hands burned. One side of his face. He's all right, Jeff. Could have jumped, but he didn't. Just sat there and took it like it was a nice cream soda. Buy him a drink for me, will you? Sure. When I get on my feet, I'll buy him one myself. Or will I? Hmm. Your neck's broken, kid. Funny. No wonder I couldn't feel anything. Well, guess this is it, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Jeff. What? Get that bunch out of here, quick. Okay, hurry up. You too, Doc. Come on, use both Get out of here. What is it, kid? Come on, you can tell I, me. I, I didn't want them to see me. Uh-huh. I'm not afraid, Jeff, but I, I just didn't want them to see me. Sure, sure, I know. It's like doing something new, you know, just like, like when I made my first solo. I didn't want anybody watching me then either. I don't know how good I'm going to be at this. Look, you want me to get out too, fella? All right. I'd hate to pull a boulder in front of you, Jeff. Sure. Sure, fella. I'll go. Well, uh... So long, kid. So long, Jeff. 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 Yeah? The kid's gone. Yeah? How's Bat? Okay. The guys think he's okay, too. That's good. Well, the the kid wanted me to buy him a drink. Do it, will you? Do it for the kid. Sure. Oh, Jeff, here's all the kid's stuff. Just a lot of junk. Only cash was a phony dollar. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A knife, keys, a picture, and a phony dollar. Not much to show for 22 years. Well... I got to get back to the desk, clearing up a little. Hello, Jeff. Hello, Bonnie. I, uh, I thought I ought to... Well, the Dutchman said that... Well, he said that he thought before I'd go, I'd better... (laughs) Gee, I don't know. All I wanted to say was... Jeff. Oh, Jeff. You're crying. Please don't. I'll, I'll never be able to. You'll never be able to what, Bonnie? I'll never be able to say it. Say what? I was going to say goodbye. Jeff, do you want me to stay or don't you? Well, Bonnie, it's... Calling Baranka. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Calling Baranka. Go ahead, Tex. Storm's breaking up. Yeah? Wind's dropping down to a whisper. Okay. Hey, Jeff. I got it. Wind up number seven. Mike, start number seven. Jen, get my sweater. Chief, Chief. The pants is clearing, Dutchie. We just got time to make it. Yeah, but who's going to fly? Well, I got one good arm, haven't I? You, but Jeff, you... Dutchie, your contract's as good as in the bag. But, come on, Jeff. So long, Bonnie. Keep that coffee warm, will you? I'll be back for breakfast. I won't be here. I'm going on the boat. Oh, oh yeah, yeah? Nobody's asked me to stay. What, they haven't? No, you wouldn't ask anybody to do anything, would you? Oh, that's right. Here, we'll flip a coin. Now, come on. Tails, you go. Heads, you stay. It's heads. What about it? I won't stay that way. You won't? I'm hard to get, Jeff. All you have to do is ask me. <laughs> Here's a little souvenir for you, Bonnie. You belong to the kid. Hey, I, uh, I like that saying goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, Bonnie. A souvenir. A souvenir. That's great. You know that? Hey. Hey. Hey, Jeff. This dollar. Jeff, it's, it's heads on both sides. 
Sergeant! I know it! Oh, Jeff, you... Oh, Jeff! Before our stars return for their curtain call, I'd like to make a timely suggestion. This season, shorter skirts and shoes with cut-out toes and heels make stockings more important than ever. So, more than ever, you want to cut down on runs and holes in your stockings, don't you? And Lux Flakes can help you there. You see, Lux saves the elastic, springy quality in your stockings. The threads give under strain instead of breaking into runs or holes so easily. And, of course, elasticity makes your stockings fit better, too, so they look smoother and more flattering. It's wise and smart and thrifty to give your stockings regular Lux care. Keep the generous large size box of Lux Flakes in the bathroom and Lux stockings after every wearing. Mr. DeMille. Dropping out of the skies and leaving Barranca far behind come Jeff Carter and Bonnie Lee, this time as Cary Grant and Jean Arthur. Tonight's play brought up a point that has always interested me, Mr. DeMille. What is it that makes men go to places like Barranca to try to shove airplanes through fog and over mountains? They don't do it for their health or for money or for fame. What is it that makes them keep at it? Well, uh, I think the best and truest answer was right in the play, Gene, when you asked the kid why he flew and he said he didn't know. Is that your opinion too, Mr. DeMille? Well, uh, there's another way of looking at it. Years ago in this country, there were things to be done. Territory to be settled, gold to be found, engines to be licked, uh, railroads to be built. Things that could satisfy a man who had sand in his shoes and a bee in his bonnet. Today, all those things have been done. But men still have the same urge to be doing things that are, that are different and a little dangerous. They are lost in the modern world until they find an outlet. This is the urge, I think, that puts some men behind the controls of airplanes and puts others in submarines. Some it sends to the South Pole and, and some it sends to jail. Yeah, what's to be done about it, Dr. DeMille? <laughs> well, it's a big problem, Carrie. I, I, I suggest we talk about something else. For instance? Well, for instance, let's hear from you. Come on. Well, uh, I'd like to say this. I think there's some special thanks due to the people who worked with us on the air tonight and in the picture. Tommy Mitchell, Richard, Richard Bartholomus, Rita Hayworth, and all the others. The ladies right. To name it to you, Mr. DeMille, our sincere gratitude. Good night. Good night, Mr. DeMille. Good night, Jane. Happy landing, pilot. Listen for the grand news coming shortly from Mr. DeMille about the stars and play you'll hear next week. Tonight's cast included Noah Berry Jr. as Joe Souther, Victor Killian as Sparks, Donald Berry as Tex, Lou Merrill as Dutchie, Alan Ladd as Les, Herbert Vigran as Mike, and John Allen as Gent. Frank Capra directs the new Columbia picture starring Gene Arthur and Thomas Mitchell. At the same studio, Cary Grant soon starts another Hawks-directed film, tentatively called The Bigger They Are. Louis Silvers appeared through the courtesy of 20th Century Fox Studio, where he was in charge of music for the new picture Young Mr. Lincoln. Mr. DeMille. Next Monday night, the Lux Radio Theater brings you a distinguished artist in a stirring play, Mr. Ronald Coleman in The Prisoner of Zender. As a novel and a drama, this classic romance enjoyed enormous success, duplicated when Mr. Coleman and Selznick International Pictures brought it to the screen. Mr. Coleman will repeat his fine role for us and will be joined by two other celebrities from the picture cast, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. and C. Aubrey Smith. And with them, Benita Hume and Ralph Forbes. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ronald Coleman, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., C. Aubrey Smith, Benita Hume, and Ralph Forbes in The Prisoner of Zender. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. And this is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm-hmm.